Coming up this week on the Just Lifestyle Show, we have a special guest joining us. Richard Hay, aka Winobs from Microsoft, will be joining us to talk about the Microsoft QA site, what that means, and the new AI features that are in it. And we get a real live demo of the new AI features in QA. If you haven't been to QA, it's a really great resource. Uh, for Microsoft technologies and get answers and all sorts of things. So Richard's going to explain it all. Great to catch up to our old friend Richard Hay. So let's get straight to Richard and Gary. All right. Richard Hay, good evening. Hey, good evening. And uh, Gary, we've got a guest with us. We have. I'm just... <laughs> so we've swapped our Richard. It's been a while since we've all seen each other. It has. It has In indeed. person or online. Yeah, yeah I, I'm really pleased for you uh, to be able to join us tonight. So, and I know you're a very busy guy, so I really appreciate Thanks that. Thanks for the invite. Appreciate and it. And I think the last time we talked, it, you were at, um, it, oh, was it Build or well, one I of those been shows? At I would have been at, um, uh, no, Informa, it was called, based out of London. Uh, they're an events, they were an events company, but I was on the editorial side writing content covering uh, enterprise technologies. Uh, which was a job that I'd been in seven years. And it kind of, when I first joined, it was just to write content for SuperSite for Windows, Paul Thorat's old stomping grounds. When he left the company, Rod Trent, who is also one of my colleagues at Microsoft now, um, said, hey, you want to come write content? And so I was basically a fr- full-time freelancer uh, for about, I don't know, four years before they hired me full-time. And then when the opportunity for this job came up in the summer of 2021, I was like, well, I don't know. I don't have the qualifications for community manager. Uh, and but somebody in another MVP, who's also a Microsoft colleague now, uh, Harjit Diwali, um, said, apply. It can't hurt. And I ended up getting the job. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so you're so uh, just tell us where you are at Microsoft. then. So I am uh, I am part of the skilling organization uh, under Microsoft, which is under ultimately cloud and AI, which is under Scott Guthrie. So he's our executive VP. Um, I work on the platform Microsoft Q&A, which is a, a question and answer platform that our customers can come and ask questions and get help from engineers, get help from product team members or get help from the community. Uh, and I'm particularly, specifically, I'm the community manager for the site. So I interface with the community. I take their feedback to the team and I take the team's input and feedback and information and feed that out to the community as well. That's excellent. So, yeah, so you you went from being enthusiast to, to um, you know, when, I remember when we talked, you, you were just, we were talking about builds and all this kind of thing. So yeah. now now you're on the inside. I am. And let me tell you how weird I was thinking about this after you invited me uh, to come on and be on the show to maybe talk about Windows 11 and the latest builds. It, I used to be so much on top of that. Right. I used to track them for work. I we, we had a running list of all the updated builds on the on the on IT Pro today. And when I was just an MVP, quote unquote, I was running the builds and staying really in touch with what the happening in the builds. Here, I do download the the new builds that get released. Uh, we roughly get an internal build about once a week, but I don't do I use the machine one day a week just so I can get usage on it. But I don't track them as much as I used to. People are always pinging me and asking me about new features and stuff. And I'm like, hadn't heard that one. So um, and uh, because I do stay focused in my in in my kind of world of Q&A and community management now. Yeah, well, it's hard enough keeping track of the builds uh, the best <laughs> yeah. of times, isn't it? But without, uh, right. maybe, yeah. Um, but, but to be fair, there hasn't been a huge amount recently. But um, I think we might start to see some things change in that. So w- when we were talking, I mean, I know you're you're an enthusiast in general, but you did want to, or we we did want to focus on the the Q A Q and A Assist platform. Yep. Um, which you sent me the links to, so I can. Uh, yeah, and, and, and Microsoft Q&A has been around since late 2019. That's when it first launched. Um, and again, many of the folks that would listen to your podcast typically are, are consumer types, right? So they're very familiar with answers at Microsoft, right? Answers.microsoft.com. Yeah. And that is a forum where people can go and ask consumer-related questions on various products and get assistance from the community. They have engineers in there and they have... Um, they have folks that are in there paid to answer questions and do that kind of stuff. Q&A is kind of the enterprise version of answers. Although there is one difference is that our focus is it's not a forum. It's a place to come ask a question. We give we give a space for people to 
ask comments to kind of clarify the question or get more info. And then we have a block where people can post answers. Uh, and then the original poster, the person who comes and asks the question has the ability to mark that answer as an accepted answer. So that helps the community kind of see what solutions are there and what works and what doesn't. Um, it's, uh, we cover just under 400 different tags of products and services across Microsoft uh, that are on there given support now, but it's something we're growing. And this past January, we launched a V2 version of the platform, which was our first full stack uh, where we own the product from bottom to top. So, you, so what kind of uh, so what kind of user would then go to this site? You say, is this so would be working in corporate or? would be an enterprise user, right? Yep. Or somebody who's used because we don't people do come in Windows tags, for instance, and ask consumer questions and we'll get help. It's not that we block people from asking consumer related questions, but most of our content is around enterprise products and services. So most of the time people come in as a customer looking for a solution to I don't know, a virtual machine question or something like that, or deploying this, that, or the other, or using certain software and products. And so it's a place where they can come in and type in their question and um, then potentially get an answer from the community, somebody who has experience with that. Uh, and as we're gonna talk about here shortly, a feature that we launched at Build is Microsoft Q&A Assist. And that's our AI enhanced kind of tools that are helping question, uh, question authors, people who come and ask those questions. Okay, so we've got two separate areas. So you've got the Q&A, which is the more the traditional- Q&A is, the, mass, is the full platform. Thing, yeah. Q&A Assist is a set of tools on that platform. Okay, got you, right. So this is um, so this is the new thing, the Q&A Assist. That's correct, yeah. Um, and it is, uh, it, it's kind of funny. We did, um, Microsoft does hackathons, right, every year, and we get, we get two or three days to be able to spend time doing, hacking a project of some kind. And, we did some hackathon stuff around taking questions on Q&A and creating prompts that could then get answers from AI, right? And we could also evaluate the quality of question uh, because we have certain kind of guidelines for the best quality questions, so we could point to that. And so this Q&A assist feature came out of that hackathon. And so what we did there was enticed enough people that we the features have been added and there's more to come, but we have three basic features when it comes to Q&A Assist. So here's the typical scenario. A customer comes to Microsoft Q&A, right? And there's the list of questions and all the tags and people can sort and filter and do all that. And so we have basically search. We're part of Learn. So if you're familiar with Microsoft Learn, Q&A is part of Microsoft Learn. And so somebody comes in and asks a question. Uh, right now, if you're not all customers get access to the AI assist, it's being un, it's being exposed to certain percentage in the test right now. Yeah, but when people get asked if they want to be a part of this, they can, when they type their question, AI will help them find out if the question might already have been answered. So it's looking right. for duplicates or similar questions, and it will point to those and let somebody go check them out. And if it solves it great they're moving forward right because the main goal of people who come to q a is to get answers solve a situation solve an issue so they can get back on the job right and so the first element of ai assist is finding those potential answers elsewhere on the platform it, it, you tell me how many times does somebody come to a platform like that and go searching for their solution nine times out of ten they're going to post their question so part of what we're doing there is trying to expose the fact that other yeah. content might be available um, if that doesn't work, and then we have um, an option where the AI will help them write a better question, make sure they provide all the right details that ensure higher success rates, that they'll get an oh, answer. Oh, that's good, yeah. Mind. So it'll help them format based on some standards we've developed over time, but also in general, kind of the what makes for a good question, right? So you have the potential to get an answer. And then the third aspect of this is actually you can ask AI to give you an answer. So you can ask, uh, we use Azure OpenAI. So you can ask OpenAI to give me an answer to my question. Uh, AI tends to work pretty good for general knowledge type questions. It's when you get into the deeper detail and kind of intricacies of a solution that it's not as effective. And so that's where we come in with our community members and engineers where they can provide those detailed kind of step-by-step -step 
solutions to people. Because ultimately our goal in Q&A is to help that customer avoid having to open a support ticket or to support yep. chat or make a support phone call. Yeah, that's really that's really interesting that because, yeah, even from my, you know, my day job, I, I, I'm an IT manager, so I get service desk tickets in there and I guess, you know, probably half of them or maybe more could, if, if I had the self-service procedures in place, then, yeah, they could answer it. But you're doing this on such, you know, a, the whole of Microsoft is, you know, that yeah. is a very wide, right, wide range. And I suppose um, a single service ticket is expensive, not just in technology, but in, in terms of the time it takes for, for, if I log an issue with my Hyper-V not being able to create a VHDX and, yeah, and I've got to wait for someone to respond right. and everything else. So you're, you, you're, you're making that process quicker for the end user. Yeah, that's the goal is to get them their solution as quickly as possible. Now, sometimes things can't get solved and they have to go to other levels of support, as you know. So our goal is to divert those and get those answers on the platform. And then what we're building is a knowledge base. Yeah. So when other customers come in and have the same problem with their Hyper-V, they might find that solution that's already been posted to someone else and be able to use it to solve their own issue, or at least at least get them going down the right path, right? Yeah. Because the many times you get stuck, you've done the search and you've looked through the documents, you look through the knowledge bases, and sometimes you just need a person on the other end to help you find your answer or to help provide that kind of spark. And what this does is sometimes that spark is just enough to get them headed down the path to a solution. May not be provided in the answer, but it's enough to go, oh, yeah, I hadn't thought about that. And then they dig deeper. Yeah. And, and I suppose they have, having the, the AI help craft the question better. That is yep. probably a really important part of it because, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm on some of the consumer Reddit Windows ones and you see people just put you know, such basic yep. thing that, you know, no one's going to even bother to answer the comment. They're not going to touch it. They're, yeah. they're not going to go try to answer it because it's yeah. just – now we have tools in place to, hey, will you give me more info or things like that, but you're going to be better served if you have a more complete question when you post it. Uh, because that is that window uh, of time is very critical. Those first couple, several hours that something's posted because, you know, the tools being used by the engineers and the way our consumer, uh, our community champions approach stuff, they're looking at stuff in almost real time. You know, they'll do a little bit of searching backwards to look in the last 48 to 72 hours. But most of the questions get resolved fairly quickly or get an answer fairly quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's interesting. That so it's crafting the question well so that you get yeah. a better response is is really, I suppose, really crucial. That's um, yeah. Yeah. I, I like that goal. idea. People yeah. Have no choice. They can say no thanks and just post what they originally wrote. Yeah. But yeah. And then you've got members of the the, the community then looking at those well Correct. for mapping questions, right? So we have um, the Azure group, the Azure customer experience team on Q and A have a program called Community Champions. So they have individuals who have been effective at answering and providing solutions on the Azure tags. And they have a very, it's kind of, I, it's MVP-ish kind of program, right? But uh, some of them are MVPs, but some aren't. Uh, some earn MVP status because of their contributions in this program. But, and they have monthly interactions with them. They have a Teams channel. They have a place to come chat. Uh, I communicate with many of them from a community perspective because they give me feedback and help me test things, help our, our team test things. But, um, you know, that's the other thing is that there's an opportunity there for every product group, every service to interact with the community that's out there helping them already. Uh, and we're growing that. We're expanding that and bringing in more partners to be able to do that very thing. Yeah, Folks that's, love that's recognition. It. Folks like to do stuff. And yeah. for the most part, our community contributors um, like helping others and they learn from it. And that's the biggest response we get usually when we ask is I, I learn from doing or helping. And, and these these answers, then uh, they are stored with the question. And is that publicly available? That's correct. Yeah, that's yeah. on the Microsoft Q&A website. So it's um, when you when you you might be able to find it and pull up the main page. But when you go to the Microsoft, in fact, that page you just had pulled up, you can get to it. Yeah. There's a breadcrumb link at the top. Um, it And so it, it presents um, a single feed of questions based on chronology, right, based on the order they were posted or the interaction, the last interaction with them. So if you were to click on questions next to the Q&A up there under Microsoft, yeah. 
the next one over. Yep, that one. Yeah. So, so this is the basic entry point. This is the questions you can filter here by questions that don't have answers. Oh, I see. Yep. Or and you, so you got a lot of flexibility there. You can click mm -hmm. on my content, um, yeah. and just look at what you've interacted with. But on the right side there, under the sort, you can go by updated. You can go by I think it's um, updated, created, and ones with answers. Yeah. And you see some visual here of things that have answers. More than one answer can be posted to a question only one can be accepted by the original poster and the oh, original see, yeah. poster can change that choice down the road um and so if you were to yeah there you go so you come in here if you were to interact with this post and you're signed in if you have a learn profile you'll track it it'll you'll follow it and you'll get alerts about it and things like that but there you go so there's a place uh to provide answers and then there's a place so the answers come at the bottom of the question the comments are in the middle uh, below between the question and any potential answers. Mm -hmm. So if, uh, it allows you um, to have a discussion. Every answer has a place for comments. And so there's an opportunity to have a discussion to clarify things. So if that answer didn't quite answer all of the original posters issues, they could come back to the answer post author and then, hey, what about and get clarification. Yes, I found a good one there for Gary. We avoid, calling it, we avoid <laughs> calling it a forum. Because it's not built to be a discussion forum like MSDN yeah. TechNet or like Answers. This is intended to be post a question, get an answer. Sometimes there has to be some conversation around, and we use comments for that to build yeah. the clarifications, which you're looking at a list of comments there. Yeah. And then on this one, there's 39 answers. My yeah, money is on the fact that some of those are comments that should and have been. And of course, you've got comments. you've got most helpful there. So yes. So, so it's, you so can So answers and comments can be upvoted. And questions, if you scroll back up to the top, there's an option underneath of a question to, uh, just down to the bottom of that, roll down a little bit. Yeah. Right there, I have the same question. Oh, I see. So yeah. you can even, that helps us identify it so that yeah. we can surface that kind of stuff through the search algorithms. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And that's of course, really we've got reporting tools so you can report a concern with a post or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And, and it looks like yeah, there's a whole range of enterprise technologies covered in here. It is. Now, if you go back up to the and, top, if yeah. you go back up to the top next to where you click the questions link, click on tags, you will now be presented with all the tags that are listed oh, on the Q&A. Yeah. And you can follow yeah. tags or, and you have to be signed in and have a learn profile for this, but you can follow tags. And then when you come here, you can just view the tags you're part of. And let's say click on, um, I don't know, Windows 10 click on the windows 10 header and this will take you to just questions tagged with the windows 10 tag right and now you can yeah. scroll again by updated time you can trim it down if you want to look for if you're a helper if you're a community member wanting to contribute you can dive in and just look at questions without answers yeah yeah and then that gives you right territory to be able to find stuff that needs help we we have a reputation point system for contributors so when, when you contribute, you get a, a, some points. When you get an answer selected as accepted, you get some points. Um, and so it helps build credibility yeah. in your uh, your contributions. That, that's really interesting, actually. I, I must admit, I always, I've been to the answers for, from the yep. consumer side, the answers set area. But this, um, especially for, so for more of the day job stuff, this is really interesting. And, and yep. I think there may well be, yeah, and you, a, if, if, when you, if you go back to questions again, just to give you an idea of the scale of the kind of how much content is there, you can see 270,000 questions yeah. on the platform right now. Yeah, again, so it's you're, probably you're, unlikely you'll be crazy lighter than unique. the answer. Yeah, if, if, you're, if you're working in enterprise uh, with a standard set of tools, it's probably difficult to come up with something totally unique because most people right. have had that problem before and that's yep. what you want isn't yep. it if you get stuck and you that's want the it. benefit so up here in search this search is actually learn wide so let's say you were type something type hyper v up in the search box let's type it. yeah there you go and hit and hit return to start the search yeah so notice so far you have not had to be signed in to access yes. any of this data. Yeah. You can create a learn profile and it will keep track of what you interact with and, and the yeah. activity list. Um, now this covers all of learn. So you, now it defaulted to Q&A because you're on Q&A when you started that search. 
but you could go and look through documentation. You could look through training courses. You could oh, look see, through yep, certifications. Yep. You could look through all kinds of other information associated with Hyper-V. So we can, and then here's the, this is my favorite sort right here is that you can find the most recent stuff. So oh, you I can see, look yep. at the last 24 yep. hours of questions that have been asked. You can even yep. go up into the tag modifier and select which tags you want to find that result in. Or if you right, know yeah, a yeah. question offer, you can search for them as well. There you go. Yeah. You can pick the particular one and you'll eliminate all yeah. the other tags. So you've now gotten yourself down to four potential yeah. uh, questions that might work. So it really allows you to um, streamline and really refine what you're looking for on the platform. And, and I suppose the, the way that the, um, the community side works so that if somebody posts an incorrect answer, that would get picked up by the by the rest of the community. Uh, some of the, there are there is an opportunity for that's why we allow more than one answer on a question, mm -hmm. because the one answer may not be the complete solution. Somebody else might have another experience. And, you know, Windows, how many different ways are there to do things yeah. on Windows? So there's more than one way to solve a problem, typically, when it comes to Windows products and things like that. So we allow the multiple answers so that somebody can come in and piggyback maybe on what somebody put that's maybe 75 percent there and they can add the other 25 percent or they can add yeah. a different perspective. Yeah, oh, that, that's that's really interesting because um, and, and I suppose really this is where, you know, I, I, I've. Hyper-V, I've got an article I wrote about ID mismatch and it get and you know it's something that I couldn't find a solution for. I fixed it right. and then wrote an article, but that would be where I could if, if I could have posted the question here, somebody may have answered it if they hadn't you I could have once yeah. answered, answered my own question and then other yeah. people can can learn from that. So so what was the subject of that? Um it was the miss ID mismatch on the VHDX right. file. We'll scroll up to the top here and we'll kind of walk you through the process of asking a question. Yeah. So uh, now you do have to be signed in to ask the question. So if you don't have a learn profile, this won't work. Um, I think I should do, actually. I will uh, move it over here. Because you've done certifications yeah. and stuff like that, you'll have. Um, yeah, I've got multiple accounts, but I should be able to sign in with my. Uh, yeah, you, Microsoft, Microsoft account will work. Yeah. Um, yeah, there we go. All right. Yeah. So there you go. So. Um, and now you need to go to questions. So you got to go back to where you were a minute ago. So you got this is search. So yeah. if you yeah, go back to where you're on the Let's questions page. Back, yeah. yeah. And you could have clicked the Q&A uh, link there, too. Yeah, you can click yeah. that Q&A link right there in the breadcrumb, breadcrumb menu there. Right there. Yeah, just to the left. I had your picture over the front, there right there. Now we go, yeah. the, uh, ask a question. There you go. Yeah. So. Over on the yeah. right up here. There you go. Yeah. So this is the uh, now see you are being offered the public preview of Q&A assist. OK, so you if you so you're you're offered it, you can choose not to use it or yeah. not. Um, but for the purposes of this, just go down into this title. Yeah. And, and you're going to get my question. Tips. So if, right at the way you the, what you were talking about, that mismatch uh, thing. Yeah, I think I, I just grabbed it. Uh, yeah. This is the error message. Yeah, there error messages are a great way to go because yeah. they give you something there. So yeah. now drop down. So you didn't have anything pop up for matching of that, but now you can enter tags. So what's this based on? Virtual Hyper-V. Hyper yeah. So there you go. There's the Hyper-V yeah. tag. Yeah. And then you would go down to the bottom here and yeah. uh, start to write your question. Yeah. And or write your details. OK, so I can just get put my there you go. In so there. Down yeah. here at the bottom at the bottom of this is where the Q&A assist is at. So you, you got to toggle there underneath the question box to turn it yeah. off if you don't want to use it. So you could click. Uh, find your answer and you could click on find similar questions. I see. Yeah. So, so click on that. So no similar questions found. So uh, do do get question feedback. Oh, wait a minute. Outside of Q&A, I forgot we're starting to surface this stuff, but it doesn't seem like that would be your answer, right? Fail to apply a snapshot to a virtual machine? No. Probably not. not. No. Okay. So click on get question feedback. 
Oh, so now it's analyzing my question. Now it's looking at how you asked your question. Yeah. So if you scroll down a little bit, it'll tell you yeah. kind of uh, to further impress. See right yeah. there, yeah, it's yeah. talking about what environment you're at, what you've done to troubleshoot it, what yeah. you have to support. Now you can discard this draft if you don't. I mean, we don't have yeah. to post this. The yeah. other one is at the top. Answer my question. So click on answer my question, and it will uh, it will go through docs. It will go through Q. It'll look through Q and A again as well. And but it's oh, it's right there up. You go. That's 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 the fix. Well, almost, yeah, yeah. That is and then uh, even that's the error anyway. The reference. Yeah. Right. So that so you could take now we do if you scroll down a little bit, we do give you an option to include this with your question post. So you could click that; yeah. it'll transfer that into your question box, and you see that we tag it AI yeah. generated because yeah. it's important to be transparent about where these answers come from. Yeah. Uh, here very soon. If you were to post that as on there using the revised question uh, or this answer, it would be attributed to an anonymous user right now. But we're making a change where it's going to actually say Q and A assist, so it's going right. to tie it to the AI. Mm. And then you can propose, you can post, or you can discard. So you kind of get the sense of what A and I Q and A assist does to help um, help the question author but also you get the basic gist of posting questions and stuff like that. So, so if this is a start to getting your answer, then great. You can go off and you can continue to do your research. You don't have to post a question because again, yeah. our goal is yeah. to answer the issue. We don't have to have a question posted to answer an issue. Right. Yeah. So it's pointing. I, I mean, it's definitely get, pointing the right direction. I can't even get the opportunity to use Q and a assist. It's never been offered to me <laughs> <laughs> and you got it first time out. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that, so that, there's but, lots yeah, of great. potential here. There's lots yeah. of potential here. But again, um, there's there's also a lot of distrust. There's a lot of unsuredness about AI and how it will work and not work and how it uses the information and things like that. But we try to make it as obvious as possible. We try to give you every option to use it, not use it, dump it, get rid of it, do your own question or whatever that might be. Oh, that, that, yeah, that's really good. And if anybody's that was, that was a perfect uh, demo, <laughs> if anybody's curious, there is the 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 fix. Um, um, so oh, anybody you. does have that, <laughs> the, then there now is was that is that answer in the link that was proposed? No, it, it isn't. That? No. Oh, it's not. Okay. No, that's my um, article that I that I did for. Oh, it, gotcha. When I but, had the when I had the error, yeah. But where did you find that information? Um. I think I, I just got it from like multiple sources, like try oh, this, God. try that, and then, and then just try thought, this, try that. Yeah, somebody's going to have the same issue as, as me, and uh, they definitely did. So, um, yeah, well, that's, so that's why, it. hey, that's why I used to blog, right? Yeah. If I saw something, I blogged about it so that it would yeah. help people. Yeah, exactly. Even during the pandemic, I blogged about how to make Facebook do widescreen as opposed to <laughs> portrait. Anyway, so then, that, there you go. That's so a you great got example. Yeah. Not only QA, but you got to see QA assist as well. Yeah, yeah, I really that's like cool. that. I think, I think that's a really powerful. I mean, Gary, just, that's something that you definitely use, isn't it? With oh with yeah, some... yeah, absolutely. And that, in fact, I have already. <laughs> so oh, very it's, good. Yeah, it's it's, a, it's an excellent tool, and I, I do, and I do like the the, the Q and A system. I think that's a really good idea of actually getting your questions right. That's just something I've always found actually that that people don't ask questions very well. Correct. <laughs> if you've ever answered trouble tickets on a help desk, yeah. you know how they come in and how they're and my thing won't work or and they don't give you any details. They don't tell you what's happening. It's it's kind of like um when somebody gives me feedback on the platform, right? On QA through the community and they say XYZ doesn't do this. Well what are you expecting it to do? You know, so what's your expectation? So you got to understand what somebody's expectation is, but also, well, how did you get there? How did you get to that error? What were the steps that got you there? Just telling me there was an error is is fine. We can even see errors in the logs. But if you tell me how you got there, I have an opportunity to go test that and see if I can reproduce it. And that's for any software development. That's for any platform development. So, yeah. Yeah, so I... I, I... I think I'm going to be adding that URL to my uh, to my favorites now because it's a, it's a great it. a, a, a great resource and yeah I mean if you've got five minutes and you and you and many of our listeners are really good at answering these questions so yeah if you've got five minutes put your answer Come on, on there, in, get, share your knowledge yeah. community 
Yeah, that's we've it. Got, yeah. There's 400 tags in there that are have, and we we have plenty of unanswered questions on the platform that are ripe for picking. You know, so go to the search or go to the questions page, find your tag, whatever it is, and then look for the unanswered stuff. But yeah, bring them in. Come on, community. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll me and Gary head over to the w Windows Media Center section. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we might not have that there. I mean, yesterday I was wearing my Zoom T-shirt. Um, so they uh, they did it. They only released that internally uh, for employees to buy. Uh, but it's a great shirt. It's very comfortable. But they even aged the logo so that it looks like it's a 20 year old T-shirt. Oh, so yeah. there's little there's little creases in the logo, even though they're not really there. They designed it that way. Oh, that's cool. But yeah, I was just wearing my Zoom T-shirt yesterday. I think I've, <laughs> I've still got my Zoom T-shirt somewhere. <laughs> I still have my Zoom. I have a, my Zoom up, up there behind me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually I actually discovered my portable media center a couple of days ago. So <laughs> Samsung one, <laughs> which and, and the Zoom bit. Yeah, it does. And of course, there uh, the Zoom software now works in the latest builds as well because they added that to the. Does it really? Yes, they added it to the release notes wow. last week. Yeah, so it's in the blog post. The, the, the no Zoom kid. software now works. Yeah. No kidding. You know, it's you know, and thanks for the chance for me to show Q and A off a little bit. Uh, it's it's a fairly young platform. This yeah. fall, it will just be four years old, um, and. It's also um, it's starting to gain more and more awareness of that it exists, you know, and that's our goal. And, and we haven't done any kind of heavy duty marketing or anything like that. It's not the approach. Right. We make it available through learn and through the search results. So if somebody's searching documents on learn about a problem or they're searching for something on Hyper-V, for instance, they're going to see that Q&A button where they can click Q&A and go see what questions have been asked and answered about it, too. So that's the goal is to tie yeah. those dots together. It's interesting to see how the these AI technologies are actually starting to affect how we interact on the web. And like you know, Hyper-V error, uh, we in the past would have gone to Google, put the error code yep. in, looked at the results. But now there's there's more than just doing straight search. You've got even at the basic level, you can go to Bing chat, ask the question. If, if this error that we were talking about, this this one we were using, if you go into Bing chat, you will get the result via my yeah. website. The article is pulled out for, through Bing. Right. But of course, now you've got these other tools as well. It's bringing all that massive amount of content that Microsoft have got. Um, yeah, on we learn. have a lot of content. so much of it that you can't ever expect to be able to navigate around it. But with, with these exactly. tools, you can. Exactly. Uh, did you watch any of Inspire today, the Inspire keynote by chance? No, I haven't Microsoft seen any of that. Partner conferences this week, Microsoft Inspire, mm -hmm. and they did the keynote this morning. And and again, just kind of like Build. Build was full of AI related announcements, Copilot this, Copilot that, and all that kind of stuff. That's where we announced Q&A Assist. And uh, today was all about AI, AI and all the partner tools, the sales tools like Dynamics 365, as well as all the, the different tools they use to help their, so partners helping customers, you know, get moving, uh, just full of it. So yeah, it's kind of, it's the new norm, right? Yeah. The AI stuff being there. And I think some of the pricing was announced today. Um, I vaguely well, recall yeah. coming across a few stories about pricing. Yeah. Um, it's it's not cheap, but, it, but yeah, yeah, it's not cheap. I think it's, it goes in, I think it's $30 per user per month and you need it with the E3, five ones. Mm. But um, you, you know, that, that's the price for, for this kind of thing nowadays, isn't it? You know, Microsoft have made a huge investment in, in AI and this is where it starts to, to get recouped. Right. Yeah. I did see that. Um, I think the Microsoft stocks were up some like 5% today after announcing those, uh, those uh, prices. I, that's so what I, I read the market's the story. Must have Right now, what time is it? It's almost four o'clock on the East Coast. It's up five percent. So, yeah. so yeah, I think the market like these these things. So it's the market it's, always it, likes that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> but in, in enterprises, this is enterprises will pay for some of this technology if it if yeah. it, you know if you get the, the the rewards and and hopefully as well that the consumers will see some of these technologies like with Bing Chat, which is just included in the you know, in, on the web or in the right. Windows uh, Copilot, because of course we've got that in the um, 
a build a couple of weeks ago and I've been I've been playing around there. It's very basic at the moment, but there is some there you know, I managed to get it to change my uh dark mode, light mode. I think that was about it. <laughs> I got it as well. When I installed yeah. that build a couple of weeks ago, I got it as well. So I mean like you said, it's very early stages like a lot of stuff is at that level. But yeah, and I, um, I wonder if nice to see it develop. Yeah, and I wonder if it's going to mean a slight a, sort of another shift in the way that we interact with things because we were talking about on the show a few weeks ago when I first started, if you wanted to change something in your operating system, you needed to know which command line. You know, Correct. if you were using DOS, you had to know the command line. If you didn't, you didn't, you couldn't do it. And I used to have a little notebook with lots of command line <laughs> stuff. Oh. And then oh, we'll yeah. go to a, to a GUI, and you can yeah, you, know, you do it through that. And you, you've still got to roughly know where you're going, but you don't need to know exactly. And then with this, uh, with this sort of chat input, then you don't even need to know where it is. You just need to know what you're asking for. So it's what kind you of a, ask for. another, another shift in the way that we use or interact with devices. And uh, yeah, during our hackathon, the part of what I did for our hackathon was the prompt engineering. So I, I did the research and learned how to format prompts, and I played with prompts and figured out how, what sequence to ask things in to get a certain result, to get certain formatting things like that, because we were looking to be able to display this stuff right through a web page, uh, because that's how we kind of built the UI to, to do this thing. And it's it's quite prompt engineering is. It, the more the more successful prompt engineer is the more detailed prompt engineering where you're very clear with your instruction. I want to do this and I want to reference this. You know, I was using it today. I'm working on a document and I said, hey, I've got a couple of odd documents that are related to that subject. And so I um, on my co-pilot for Word, I said, hey, I want to I want to use this document and this document to create a comp and compile a, a single document that summarizes all that. And so, again, only good is the detail of your documents to start with. But um, it certainly speeds things up. I don't know if external yet or not, but I know they've announced it, and that's the the copilot for Teams, and the way it will summarize a meeting and yes. provide you a summary yeah. for the meeting. Just amazing, the kind. And not this is not just Rich Hay because he's a Microsofter. It's not even my. I use the product daily. I live in Teams daily. That's kind of our existence. But it's just the coolest thing to kind of. And if I miss a meeting, you know, because we have a lot of meetings and sometimes there's conflicts. Those summaries are great snapshots to kind of catch up on what was discussed in a meeting, um, especially if you have action items or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it, it's interesting how these 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 technology. I mean, it's, it's certainly the, uh, the the buzz the buzzword at the moment, the buzz, isn't it? And uh, yeah, yeah. even if a few years ago it was metaverse and things like that, and that really has been replaced by AI stuff now, which is the, yeah. the hot thing at the moment. But I guess in some of these technology that you've been building these Q&A stuff, it, this is technology that's available in Azure, isn't it, for enterprises to come up with their own solutions again? Right. We're using Azure OpenAI. So that is a product that's available to enterprise customers to use to build their own AI assist or co-pilots. I mean, today in, in, in Build and at Inspire, and those aren't my bailiwicks, but I know the content that came out of those, they announced tools for customers to be able to build their own co-pilot and using their own data and their own you know tools and stuff like that. So they, the availability of that, uh, to be able to spread that into your own product stack is out there with Azure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I've even seen, you know, on a basic level, like you've got uh, Power Automate, there's the Power Virtual Assistants, I think they're called now, and um, which, it, which it just looks like Power Automate, which, uh, you know, I do a lot of stuff with that because it's such a mm. great way of making uh, solutions. And I think that, you know, there's easy You're solutions. You're talking about like the can... low code type stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 even, even though, you know, I, I had a quick play with it the other week through my developer account, and it, it looks like it's fairly accessible to get started, at least with, with that mm -hmm. kind of thing, uh, without a huge amount of costs. Before I left my last job, one of my last big projects over the last eight months or so was I reviewed all the big low-code, no-code platforms, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and some others that are out there, third parties that aren't the big tech companies. And it was even this has been now over you know, two-plus years. It's amazing what's out there to be able to, and they call it citizen development or what are they? Yeah, is it citizen developer? Or I can't remember yeah. the term, but the capabilities there are pretty tremendous. Um, but again, 
I, I think there's a bit of a misnomer about low code, no code is that I don't know that it's reached the point of drag and drop kind of type creation. I think you still have to have some knowledge, yeah. some developer sense to build those tools out, but they certainly are making them more and more easier to do. They demoed more of it today at the Inspire keynote, uh, of Power Automate, Power BI type stuff to be able to, to build it. They announced a new feature, a new, new service. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but same idea to help you build and look at data because that's the strength, right? Automate low end stuff that, you know, that kind of ground level stuff so you can focus on the more detail. Yeah, well, I've done a, I've done a few Power Automate project recently. So, you know, when the email arrives from this address, check if it's got a, mm -hmm. a PDF, if it's got a this, do that, and you know, all that kind yep. of stuff, which I could have done directly in Visual Studio, but doing it through Power Automate is so much, much easier. easier. Yeah. yeah, and it's and you and you're focusing on the flow rather than the actual code level. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Gary, it's something that encroaches on your area a bit, but you're, yeah, it's all it's all tools that you can use. Oh, yeah, yeah, and I, I've always said that it, it, the hybrid workforce is quite a good way of working. I mean, we, I've seen, certainly seen that with people, with some, somebody's doing low code, but they need something a bit more advanced. So you've got someone in the back end writing a, a, a proper API for them to link to, and that's all yeah. supporting yeah. through this. And it, it, it doesn't. I, I, I actually did a talk some some months ago about how why I'm not why I'm not afraid of low code why, why as a developer I, I don't see it as a threat I think think that it's, it's actually a, a plus because people I mean let's face it people have been doing low code stuff for years Excel you just look Excel, at the yeah. number of Excel spreadsheets out there which do really complex macros and stuff that's low code and that that's basically yeah. what what people have been doing for years and this just gives those sort of developers a bit more a, a bit a bit better controlled environment to do it that sort of stuff in yeah. and uh, you know, I'd venture to say, though, that it'll, it lets that low hanging fruit get taken care of by the person yep. who's familiar with the flow and allows the developer to stay more kind of heads down into the deeper code stuff that they have to, or the high, you know, that other, not the, the would you call it high code, but whatever you want to yep. call it, the opposite end of that spectrum, right? Yep. Building the yep. APIs and building the, the back end stuff. Whereas if, if I'm a, if I'm a, a product manager and I want to track, how many times somebody mentions my product on social media or something like that. Power Automate lets me build tools like that to be able to find that data and have reports to that. It's kind of like, it's kind of like Outlook rules, right? We build Outlook rules is kind of an early kind of Power Automate type thing, right? In the sense of it, because I'm saying if it matches this, I want it to go here, or I want you to flag it red, green, yellow, blue, whatever that is. Same idea. You're giving the user who's at that level who handles that stuff in an admin office or supply office the ability to automate their process without having to go to a developer and provide a statement of work, a justification and business justification, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to then invest the development time into a tool to do that. This actually avoids that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it, I, find, I find it really useful for you know, so spend the time on the business flow rather than than, right. than than writing io code to move files around or what or whatever you know the, it's as long as the api so that you get the platforms that you work with have got good apis and that's what you really right. want isn't it? Yeah. and i think as, a, yeah. as developers need to come up with these good apis and then that's how we're automating things like that can be used to, to connect them together and of course, all, where we've come in, in yeah. you know, in all of this time, uh, I, I was telling somebody the other day about being an MVP over the 12 years I was an MVP. And because um, I think it's been publicly announced that MSDN and TechNet are being retired. Um, the content's not going to go anywhere. But, you know, back in my day, my first days of being an MVP, it was the news groups. Right. Yeah. Outlook Express, yeah. reading the yeah. news groups is how yeah. I, we did it in those days. And and now that's transitioned to all these other tools and on the through the web, like answers.microsoft.com um, and even now Q&A. But, you know, it, back in those days, it, it just, you know, the technology as it's moved along, you've watched the, the hand wringing and the, oh, no, what are we going to do without this? What are we going to do without that? But we always tend to send we tend to have those attachments to the technology. And then when, as we move forward, we gain trust and then we move on. But I think that's the biggest challenge with technology and changes in technology 
is that it's one change is not easy. Nobody likes to have to go through change. But as these different platforms age out and you have new stuff coming on board, such as AI now, which is all the buzz, but I'd say more than buzz. I, there's some real reality in the productivity that AI can bring to anything. And so there's still a bit of unknown, right? It was kind of like moving from the news groups to the forums. I, I forget what the first version of answers was. It wasn't answers, but we had a we had something on the web that we answered questions through. But, you know, and each time you weren't sure if it was the right fit or the right fill or something like that. So to me, that's what's amazing about technology. And now having been kind of on the inside, watching it get built, watching the sausage made, that has blown my mind. And it's it, it was kind of like when I was in the Navy, my last two tours were aviation related tours. I'd grown up in the Navy on surface ships, right? Never been around aviation. But my two tours in aviation gave me more confidence in flying than anything ever in the world because I learned how they're cared for, how they fly, what they're capable of, stuff like that. Well, it's the same thing now watching stuff get built and, and the confidence in the platform, the awareness of the platform. Yeah, there's going to be challenges. There's going to be issues, but you, you address them, you get the feedback, you feed it back into the loop so it can be worked on and, you know, and move the platform forward. And it just, you know, watching this stuff happen from the inside has just been eye opening. It really has. Yeah, I can imagine. I, I still miss my MSDN subscription where I got my... <laughs> book big pack thing with all the, the discs book, right? yeah. Did you get, uh, i got yeah. on it after the binders but i heard they no. used to ship windows the was it vista used to, yeah they used to ship binders with the cds in it to install the yeah. the builds of windows that they were yeah. testing oh, if, if you go imagine. if you go back far enough they used to ship with floppy disks floppy disks for those things because <laughs> i'm trying to re i think i got in on the reset so was that vista was the reset? Yeah, the reset. Well, I yeah, think the, and that was the first one that you could download too. online, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's when I became an early beta tester. And uh, yeah, just amazing. And oh, now yeah, we download reset. that stuff. Yeah, I know what you mean. You mean the reset of Vista when they Correct, it when back they had to basically. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I used to get the, the big binders, the MSTN binders with all the discs in. And I used to really look forward to getting all those in. Right. Yeah. And you had every that operating have, system. That would have all the documents in there. Yeah. It would have all the content and stuff like yeah. that. It, in um, wow. CHTML file, was it? Or, yeah, right. the Microsoft. Something like that. Help, yeah, HTML file. Yeah. But yeah, wow. I used to get all that. I used to love getting all them. And you get the magazines as well. I used to get the MSDN magazine. MSDN magazine, and, yeah. yeah. It's a shit. You kind of lost that tactile feel now. Everything's online. But yeah. so you've got access to everything now. But you kind of lose the... Um, yeah, but now I print stuff out so I can study it. <laughs> yeah. You know, because I find that a better way to work, to kind of make notes and stuff. I can't, sometimes working online is fine, but sometimes I like that paper under my hand so I can highlight and mark and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I think these are these are great tools that you've uh, that you've shown. I've I've learned a lot tonight, which is which is great. So I'm hopefully listeners have to. I, I suspect <laughs> many of our listeners use it already and probably answered a lot of the questions already. That'd be so, great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I'm certainly going to sp spend a bit more time there, especially as I seem to have got the AI. Uh, you got the well. AI assist, yeah. Yeah, so I'll, I'll do that. So I I, re I really do appreciate you uh, coming on, Richard, to talk to us, and it's great to catch up with you. Yeah, it's been too long. It most definitely yeah. has. I know that I was I was kind of early days of being at Microsoft. I was navigating my role and am I allowed to do this? Can I come yeah. on podcast and talk? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, do I have to check with legal if that's OK? And I've since learned that it's not necessary. Again, we don't talk about internal stuff. Everything I've shared today is public. And I'm glad that more people will learn about what Q&A is, because yeah. one of the goals of Q&A is to be that kind of environment where our customers can come and get answers. Now, you know, engineers are in there, but the community is really the strength of the platform. Mm. It's those folks that are just passionate about some MVPs, right? And even non MVPs. So we've all three been MVPs or may, are you still MVPs? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh, good. So, so, you know, we know what that passion is like. We, we want to help whether it's through blog posts or forums or answering questions or whatever it is. And Q&A is a great platform for that. I'm not going to tell you that everybody comes and answers questions on Q&A is going to become an MVP. But if somebody is looking to contribute, it's a great platform to be able to do it because there's plenty of opportunity.
Yeah, absolutely is. And I'll include the links um, yes, please, along with thanks. the show notes as well. But um, yeah, they, they, I think they're going to be good tools. And I'm definitely going to be spending some, some time on them myself. And um, oh, what about you, Richard? Where can people go to find you? Because you're active on all platforms as well. I, I am. You know, it's like this this social media proliferation <laughs> thing. But I will give out at WinOBS. I'm at WinOBS on almost everything. But most definitely, I'm still tracking Twitter. And I'm on Threads and Mastodon and what is the other one? Uh, T2 and Blue Sky. But Twitter, by far, is still the place to find me and reach out at WinOBS. And you'll always get me there. Um, my web- website, windowsobserver.com, doesn't get much attention these days um, <laughs> because I'm just not coming across opportunities to blog there. Um, I'm really hoping to get my own podcast back off the ground. Um, I've got a, I'm at a point now where I've got the time to be able to do it, but I just got to figure out, you know, how to come about it. Um, but yeah, at WinOBS on Twitter and ping me about anything. And I can, and if you're interested in Q&A, ping me at WinOBS and we'll get connected on my Microsoft side. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I really do appreciate taking time out from your busy schedule. I think I've learned a lot tonight. I think you as well, Gary. So I think uh, I said you have. Yeah, it's great yeah. to see this tool, especially AI, in, in real time, real, real, ex, uh, real examples, real world yeah. scenarios. Yeah. And, and we've done that with MVPs. We've we've done MVP PGIs to be able to show them these features and talk to them about Q and A as well. Because even within that community, it was not a very well known product, yeah. a platform. So and again, MVPs do have a lot of enterprise level focus and there's not as much consumer anymore. So again, the goal is to just let people know it's there. So thanks for the opportunity. And it's great to see you too. Um, yeah. Silent Silent tech and- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Well, yeah, I really appreciate that, Richard. So uh, we'll thanks for coming out. We won't leave it as long for next time. All right. Thanks a bunch.